Do you, I did a, one, do you go like one at a time and then, or like, do you both? Oh, go God. Out? See, his is really good. <laughs> <laughs> what makes a pantry pasta a pantry pasta? I think it should be something that you can just make whenever. The other thing that I think makes a pantry pasta is it should be really fast. So this whole thing is like a 25 minute experience. Today I am making caramelized onion and tuna pasta. And later in the episode, I will be bringing in a secret fitness expert who is going to judge my macros. So I've got a red onion, any color onion will do. And I'm just gonna thinly slice it. I put my skillet over medium heat to warm it up while I do this prep, um, which is a good habit to get into, especially when you're cooking in stainless steel. If your pan is nice and hot before you add the oil, it basically is nonstick. That's something I've learned about stainless steel in the past year. There are different versions of this pasta. Some of them are tomatoey. I feel like the version my mom made also had canned tomatoes or tomato paste, but I went for more of like a white sauce that is salty and briny. There's chovies and the tuna is salty. The onion gets nice and caramelized and sweet and jammy. And then we've got our egg. So it's really everything. And also the first time I made it, I had no herbs in the house. I didn't even have a lemon in the house. So I didn't put herbs in, missed them a little bit. And I just used vinegar instead of the lemon. It was actually really good. We need to improvise guys. We always need to be spinning it. We just need to be thinking, why do I add a lemon? Because it is a little bit sour and acidic. Other things are also sour and acidic. We shall roll. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, well. <laughs> I forgot that I was slicing and I started dicing. We're not gonna worry about it. See, if that happens to you, just go back to slicing. Okay, one onion, sliced diced. Next, olive oil, quarter cup. Uh, some of my pastas have a third of a cup, so I feel that adding a quarter cup is being mindful of my macros. We'll find out later if that's true. This pasta also, I don't know, it could be two people, it could be three, I don't think it stretches to four. But when we find out how the numbers stack up, we might want to revisit. Salt and pepper to get these guys going. These started to sweat right away. I already got a tiny bit of color because the oil got hot right away. I just want to start to see them release some of their juices, see that combination of oil and juice in the bottom of the pan. And then, I don't know, this started like a few months ago and I am still firmly in my steaming era. I've been covering <laughs> pans left and right like nobody's business and really leaning into the incredible power of steam, which is among the heat methods, top two, I would say. High heat, high moisture. So fast and forgiving. We love that as a motto. It's great. Okay, so now that those are going, I'm actually gonna steal this because my water is boiling. Covering that, I want this to go quickly, but I also wanna bring the best out of the onions. This will jumpstart the caramelization process by getting them to release their liquid so that then we can build color for sweetness. While those are steaming and my water's already hot, I think this is a terrific time to call in our fitness expert. <laughs> Everyone, it's our fitness expert. <laughs> How are you doing today? Oh, that's good. I have my onions going. I'm You're making rice. You are making rice? Yeah. A lot of people are like, no white food. And that's like rice, the potatoes, the bread. And I feel like I was brought up on that. So I thought that like c cutting the carbs was a good thing. And then I made pasta and I told you that it had like five or six ounces of um, pasta in it for one serving, and you were like, that's good. Yeah, it's great. There's nothing wrong with carbs. <laughs> Did everybody hear that? <laughs> there is nothing wrong with carbs. And you should rephrase that to be positive. Carbs are great. Carbs so. are great. You have watched a lot of the episodes. I have. What's like one thing that maybe stands out in my, in my cooking to you? Big fan of fat. Big fan of fat, which I appreciate. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because fat is good. Carbs are great. Fat is good. So we sent you this recipe. Walk us through it. So if the three things that are the macros, which this is the part, like I'm like, it's enough for me to count the protein, but I'm also supposed to be counting the carbs and the fat. So from a, for, let's just say from a protein perspective, how is this dinner? I need to see the size of your tuna cans. You can see them. Yeah. They're jars. Oh, okay. But it's, yeah. and they're packed in oil, of course. So actually, you're probably hitting more protein than I thought for this. Pushing closer to 100 for the entire recipe. Oh, for the entire recipe. Yeah. Okay, so if it's for two people, then that means one person's getting 50 grams. Yeah. Which is good. Great. Great. Yeah. Carbs. Carbs. <laughs> it's decently high in carbs, but most people's diets are going to be higher in carbs. Great. Unless they're purposely cutting them out, which is another conversation, but. Oh yeah, we're not doing that. Are you doing that? Am I doing that? Yeah. No. We're winning at carbs. Our protein is absolutely incredible. And then, do you like that extra egg in there? Great. Eggs are awesome. Love an egg. Whole eggs are both fats and proteins. So yeah. That in mind. Have you, how do you feel about the fat in this dish? It's a lot. <laughs> What's a lot? What you have in there. <laughs> And your tuna is packed in fat already. Mm. So there's a lot of oil in there. Mm -hmm. What What are we saying about this dish? I'm saying, do you need to pour a quarter of a cup of olive oil in the pan first? Um, <laughs> yes. Turns out I do. Yes. Because look at how good those onions look. Amazing, but like, could they look just as good with half of that? Like two tablespoons of olive oil? No? They would look good, but possibly there could be charring. We don't want the pan to get dry. Got it. But aren't you a big fan of like the steam method? I am. We're steaming. Oh, magical. If you were to buy tuna in water, you'd be pulling away 24 grams of fat out of your dish. I would also be crying. Like it would be, it's possible I would cry. But you have a quarter cup in the pan already. Okay, so a luscious, beautiful onions and like watered, watered out tuna. Sure, but... Tuna just needs a chance to become magical. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's really so true. I'll, like, I'll make it, and I'll show you how I do right. for fat and things. And I'll send it to you, and then you can see, do with that what you want. So, Ross, as a, as a fan of the channel, it's just so wonderful to have you as a contributor to the channel, let me just say. And um, you just have great shoulders, and you're a great person. Thanks conversation with Ross I'm not gonna let him olive oil shame me but it it is making me think because these are very juicy and they're gorgeous I think we should just let Ross cook it with less fat and then he he can tell us how it is these are now really soft they haven't taken any color on I do want to let them get a little bit brown but I'm gonna do that in stages so I'm gonna drop these three anchovies in. What I love about that conversation is that all of these blocks of energy, the carbs, the protein, and the fat, like they're all essential and we need to eat all of them. I, I just feel validated right now. Okay, so my anchovies are in, my garlics are in, and this is when you can add some crushed red pepper. Recipe calls for half a teaspoon, I'm gonna add just a little smidge extra. You don't have to use chili if it's not your thing, but I do think that with the sweet onions, a little bit of heat, the like saltiness and the deliciousness of the tuna and the anchovy, it's just a nice flavor to have in there. This stage of cooking is about getting a little bit of color on the garlic and at the same time start to build up a little of that caramelization on the onion. But in the meantime, I'm going to cook these eggs in the pasta water and I wanna cook these to jammy. So that's in between six and seven minutes. Um, if you go to seven, your yolk will be like a little bit more set. If you're closer to six, it will be more runny. So if you want to break into that egg and have the yolk like really run through the pasta, um, air on the side of a little bit less. Okay, so eggs have been in for a couple of minutes and I'm starting to see some nice light browning on the garlic and on the edges 
of some of the onions. So this is a good time to put in the capers. I like them whole because I like to bite in and just get that nice pop of like real briny caper flavor. And these I'm going to cook until they start to fry a little bit in the oil and the onions are more caramelized. This sauce is going to be done before your pasta and it's kind of written that way and it's built that way. So this is just going to be done and waiting for you and hanging out. This is gorgeous, jammy, frying, caramelizing. I am going to cover it for safekeeping, killing the heat, putting this on a cool burner so it will finish cooking, be nice and calm, warm, not taking on any more color. Eggs are ready. Straight into the ice bath. This will stop the cooking and I can peel them ahead of time. We haven't really done this before, but I'm going to weigh out the amount of pasta I need for this recipe. I'm going with a little mezzi rigatoni, which is like rigatoni, but half the length. This will work with anything. I do like a short tubular pasta for a sauce like this because some of the little bits of tuna are gonna like find their way inside the tube. And then we have magical tunnels that have like caramelized onion and maybe a caper pops in there and they're just fun to eat. But this would totally work with a spaghetti, um, a thicker pasta. It would work with a twisted shape like tamale or fusilli. Okay, that's nine. <laughs> Wait, let's look at what two ounces is. It's like so upsetting. That's two ounces of pasta. That's the saddest thing I've ever seen. I get it, but like nobody eats pasta like that. So I need three. I guess we need a couple for the tasters, right? Okay, so I've got my parsley. I think I just said handful. Um, basil would be really nice with this. Chives would be really nice with this. Scallion, greens, if you had some of that. And I'm not gonna go crazy thin because I want a little texture. Note to self, ask Rossi next time. He mentioned vegetables. Is the parsley a vegetable? <laughs> Maybe we just have to have a nice big salad with this because vegetables are free. Nutritional yeast vinaigrette, However, then we're in a like counting the fat again situation. You guys know I'm never gonna be a person who's gonna count my fat, right? Just one thing at a time. I'm counting my protein. I got 117 grams of protein in the other day. I was really proud of myself. I did have a horrible stomach ache. Note to the audience, does eating a lot of protein give you a horrible stomach ache or is this something I have to like grow into and get used to? Also protein powder for people who are having a hard time getting all the protein from the food sources, does protein powder make you constipated? Question for the audience. Please let us know. Okay, parsley's done, peel some eggs. When you're peeling a jammy egg, just make a note to yourself before you start, like it's not a hard boiled egg. They're a little bit more delicate. And I always try to bonk the bottom because that's where the air hole is. Fun fact that I'm sure everybody already knows, the fresher the egg, the harder it is to peel because this membrane is like fused really tight when they're super fresh. And over time, a little bit of air builds up. The eggs, you can either put them directly onto the pasta. They're cold, but they're going to sit out now. So they'll come to room temperature. Or if you're using a spider to scoop out your pasta and you still have your hot pasta water there, you can put the egg in for like 30 seconds just to take the chill off before you add it to the pasta. I'm gonna check my noodle, but we're a minute or two shy of the package, which is where we like to be because we're gonna cook this to finish it in the sauce. This is a perfect example of being able to see the little ring of uncooked pasta in the center, which is one of the ways you can tell that it's al dente. I really recommend a spider. We use it all the time. These ones are in the gift guide. They cost like six bucks. You'll use it every day. Whoopsie, I already had a loss. It's a good thing I counted those couple extra rigatoni because one of them already went over. I think I'm in a 10 inch. Could have probably been in a 12 inch. 
but making it work, tossing that pasta water through, got my beautiful caramelized onions, coating, gorgeousness, beautiful. I'm gonna put my eggies back in and add the tuna. So you wanna do this at the end. You know, you want warm tuna. I don't necessarily need hot tuna. Do you know what I mean? And if this weirds you out, just think about tuna casserole. This is better. I once made tuna casserole for my kids because I thought it was like a thing that you should do as a parent. <laughs> we were all so grossed out. Um, I'm taking my eggs out. They've had about 30 seconds. Yet another use of the spider today. And I want a little more water. But I'm gonna turn the heat off. I'm gonna add my lemon juice. I think lemon's really important, but a splash of any vinegar that you have lying around will also do the trick. And I'm gonna add the parsley. I think I should stir based on what's happened up to this point. I just need to taste. Mmm. Oh my God, health food is amazing. I love how healthy I am now. It's just great. Just food is great. Food is the best. I love food so much. <laughs> All right, so let's really try to divide this into two portions. You could do this with scallops. You could do it with clams. You could do it with mussels. It would be very, very similar. Oh, look at what you get when you're healthy. Cause carbs are great. Cause Ross said so. And I trust him. Did you see that guy's biceps? How could you have biceps like that and not be trustworthy? The piece de resistance. <laughs> Look, you like nestle that perfect little egg. This is me not drizzling olive oil over the top. I'm doing these things so that we don't need olive oil. Cannot overestimate the importance of the al dente pasta for this because you have your tuna's kind of shreddy. Your egg is gorgeous, jammy, succulent, bouncy, all of those things. You've got sweet caramelized onions and you've got the brightness of the little bites of caper and the parsley. So your pasta really needs to have like structural integrity. Mmm. Oh my God, it's so good. It's perfect. I just wish you all to just build muscle and nourish yourselves and lean into it, rely on the pantry, uh, rely on the jarred and tinned fishes and get yourself a Ross because it's been one of the greatest things that I ever did. Yeah, most people don't know that like, you legit can do things in the gym. You just like post selfies, but you legit deadlift things too. Wow.